This is going to be biblical references on the Sea of Glass. The Sea of Glass is an enormous body of water that sits under the third heaven. As you know from reading the Bible, the third heaven is where God is, and God is straight north. Job 37, 9 through 10 says, Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God frost is given, and the breadth of the waters is straightened. And then Psalm 75, 6 and 7, it says, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one, and setteth up another. Notice how they substitute the word north with God. Let's read it again. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. The Holy Spirit, instead of putting the word north, he put God. And then Job 37, 22 says, Fair weather cometh out of the north, with God is terrible majesty. And then Psalms 48, 2 says, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. So God is in the north. When the devil talks about reigning as God, he wants to reign in the north. Isaiah 14, 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So God lives up north, way up north. His throne up there sits on a sea of glass. Revelation 4, 6 says, And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts, full of eyes, before and behind. This sea of glass is solid, and isn't fragile like the glass you're thinking of. If you turn to Revelation 15, 2, you will see how it is sturdy enough to hold people up. Revelation 15, 2, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Remember that fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. This sea of glass, or body of water, over your head is also referred to as the deep, or the deeps. In Job 38.30 it says, The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. So the sea of glass is sturdy, because it is frozen. Connect that with the first verse we, we read, Job 37, 9. Out of the south cometh the world wind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God frost is given, and the breadth of the waters is straightened. And then Job 37, 18 calls it a strong, strong, molten-looking glass. Anyone who has been reading the Bible for a while knows that there are three heavens with God being in the third heaven up north. And look at Psalms 148 and verse 4. It says, Praise Him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Since it says above the heavens, you know it has to be above the first and second heaven. So this large body of water is the sea of glass under the third heaven. God div divided this huge body of water from the waters with the firmament. The firmament is what people call outer space. In Genesis 1, 7 and 8 it says, And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. The waters above the firmament would be the great deeps, the sea of glass. And then verse 8 says, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. We know this firmament is what people call outer space. It's the second heaven. And we know this because of Genesis 1, 14 through 17. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. 
and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So you have seen how the sea of glass is like unto crystal. God's throne sits on the sea of glass. And how is it? It is a sea of glass mingled with fire. Keep the words crystal and fire in your mind and turn to Ezekiel and see how Ezekiel actually saw this. Ezekiel 1 22 through 27 says in the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretch forth over the, their heads above and under the firmament were their wings were their wings straight the one toward the other every one had two which covered on this side and every one had two which covered on that side their bodies and when they went I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads, and they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Remember, Revelation 4, 6 talks about the throne being on the sea of glass. And it says, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And verse 27, and I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it. So we've seen a throne, we've seen crystal, we've seen the word fire, firmament. From the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. Notice that Ezekiel couldn't really see God, he just saw the appearance of a man. He couldn't see God face to face. And right now in our sinful bodies, we just see God through a glass darkly. 1 Corinthians thirteen twelve. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And then Matthew 4.19 says. He saith unto them follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. The reason God needed fishers of men. Is because we are under a enormous body of water. Psalms 18.16 says. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. In the book of Exodus, Moses led the children of Israel through the Red Sea, while Pharaoh and his army followed behind them. And compare this to how the body of Christ will go out in the rapture. And when we go out in the rapture, we will go straight through the sea of glass. The sea has probably been stained red by the blood of Jesus Christ, so we're going through a Red Sea. Without his blood, we would never have been able to make it to the third heaven. Not only this, but as we go through the sea of glass at the speed of light, there is a mysterious creature named Leviathan that's on our trail. He is a great red dragon, which can be compared to Pharaoh, who is also a great dragon, as it calls him in Ezekiel 29 and verse 3. And this, this Leviathan is Satan in his natural state. And you say, that's crazy. I thought Leviathan was a dinosaur. How do we know Satan is Leviathan? Isaiah 27 1 says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So Leviathan is the piercing serpent, the crooked serpent, and the dragon in the, what's he in? He's in the sea. And now, see Revelation 12 and verse 9. Who else is called the serpent or the dragon? It says, And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In Job 41, it tells us where, where Leviathan is at. Job 41, 31 through 34 says, He maketh the deep 
to boil like a pot? What's the deep that's up there? That's that body of water we've been talking about. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot because he's a dragon. He breathes fire. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. So Satan is without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Is a dinosaur the king over the children of pride? No, Satan is. Another proof Leviathan is Satan is because he is the king over all the children of pride and made without fear. So at the rapture we go out in an exodus through a Red Sea, stained by the blood of Jesus Christ, and Leviathan, just like Pharaoh, will be on our trail. And after we go to the great or after we go to the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb, we come back down through the sea of glass on white horses with Jesus Christ leading the way. And that's why Habakkuk 3.15 says, Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses through the heap of great waters.